Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're part of our Reading With Your Kids family. Please be sure to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash readingwithyourkids, at Jedly Magic on Twitter, and at Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. Our guest today is W. Bradley Swift. He's here to talk to us about Zach Bates' Eco Adventure. Before we begin, we want to let you know that we're, we are just overwhelmed by the response to reading in the new year. Our free virtual family literacy fair that's happening at readinginthenewyear.com. We've assembled authors from all over the world. They are going to climb up to our virtual stages and read their books aloud for you and for your kids. Talk about hours of free entertainment Really wholesome entertainment, really great bonding entertainment. There'll also be great performance videos, and check this out. There's a ton of activities you can download to have lots and lots of offline fun with your kids. It's all happening at readinginthenewyear.com. Go there. You're going to have a great time. It is live now and will be running through New Year's Day 2021. Readinginthenewyear.com Join us right now from the mountains of beautiful North Carolina. We are here to talk about Zach Bates' Eco Adventure, a series, a team, a, 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 a number of Zoom events happening with the author of, of the series, Brad Swift. Brad, welcome to the Reading With Your Kids podcast. So great to be here. Looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah, so why don't we just start? There's a, there's a lot going on. Let's let's start about um, finding out who Zach Bates is and what's the adve- the eco adventures that he goes on. Well, Zach Bates is a young boy, early teenage uh, range, who um, is typical teenager. Uh, I think the one thing that's a little bit different about Zach is he. Uh, because of his love for animals, which is not atypical, uh, he actually has his own little private zoo that he maintains. Uh, and he, the two things that he most loves, uh, is, uh, animals and the relationship with, uh, animals and magic. He believes in magic. Um, and, uh, probably on the downside is, um, he's pretty shy and he's not real comfortable, particularly around, uh, girls his own age. Uh, so you kind of a typical teen. I, I was going to say I haven't met a, a teen who was comfortable with <laughs> with girls' his own age. <laughs> At least not when I was growing up. That's right. Me too. Same yeah. thing. Uh, this is neat. Now, um, I, I I love that Zach loves animals and has his own little zoo. You said. That's correct. You know, he has a kind of a, you know, a private zoo. And he does charge 25 cents uh, to to go into his zoo, but um, uh, his family is completely free. He says, you know, his fam- family, you know, puts up with the the animals itself, mainly, you know, like uh, guinea pigs and rabbits and things of that nature. And he also has the love of his life is his Karen Terrier, um, uh, Argus, uh, excuse me, Angus. I use my own dog's name. Angus is is, is uh, Zach's name, uh, dog's name, and uh, uh, Angus plays a pretty important uh, role, particularly in uh, book number one, uh, Dominion Overall. Wow, really, really cool. Um, I, you know, as you were talking about Zach's private zoo, it, it brought up a memory that I had when my wife and I first got married many, many years ago. Uh, we were touring Puerto Rico and we saw a sign on the side of the road for us and it was just this little road tiny can't homemade road sign that said Noah's Ark with an arrow <laughs> and we thought what the heck and we followed it up it, way into the country way up into the mountains to this home and this person literally had a zoo of and it looked like Noah's Ark it was like every <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like, you know, one or two of everything. Um, probably didn't meet any of the FDA standards for, you know, proper proper zoos, but that was 
almost 30 years ago, so I don't know how strict the regulations were then. Yeah, probably not very strict at all. Yeah. So what was the inspiration for Zach? Gosh, you know, it, a couple of different things, I would say. You know, number one, um, I my own love for animals. I, you know, I have had uh, dogs and or cats um, virtually all my all my life and have a great love and respect for them, uh, so much so that uh, sometime around the age of about seven, um, I changed my my career path, if you can imagine having a career path at the age of seven, um, I went from uh, wanting to be a, a physician, a medical doctor, uh, to deciding I wanted to be a veterinarian instead. And literally, I, I, I guess in one way you could say I didn't have enough imagination to, to think beyond that because I stayed on that path and uh, graduated uh, in 1974 from the University of Georgia College of Veterinary Medicine and was in practice for many years. Um, so certainly part of the inspiration came from my deep love for uh, animals and also um, a, a love and respect for, for science. And so that's, those are both woven into the story. Um, the other part of it, I would say, is um, something pivotal happened uh, at about the fourth grade. In fact, you know, we had moved... Um, to Raleigh, North Carolina, moved from the south. Uh, I lost my dad um, when I, I was just about to turn seven, and uh, very unexpectedly. So we were still, uh, when we moved to Raleigh, we're still kind of in the sorting things out and trying to, you know, get our lives back together. And uh, my brother, I have a, a older brother, and he immediately connected with um, friends of his own age, and he, they didn't want, you know. You know, this kid brother hanging around. So I was there <laughs> left by myself. So I would spend a lot of time begging with my mom, pleading her to come out and play with me. Of course, she was trying to get the, the household, you know, set up. Mm -hmm. And luckily for both of us, um, our next door neighbor, Mrs. Crabtree, heard my pleas and uh, one afternoon came home and with a stack of books from her work. It just turns out she was the children's librarian at the downtown library in Raleigh. And she gave them to my mom. She said, you know, maybe your son would enjoy, uh, you know, some of these. Um, what she didn't know is I had a deep, deep aversion to reading, particularly in the summertime. I mean, why would anybody want to read in the summertime when you have to spend, you know, nine months of the year in school reading? That's kind of my mindset. Uh -huh. um, but um, my mom persisted. In fact, uh, you know, every time I begged for her to come out and play, she would point to the books first and say, <laughs> how about, why don't you try reading a book first? And again, out of frustration, finally I said, okay, I'll I'll pick up one and, you know, show her that I, I gave it a try. And um, I, I, I wished I could remember what the book was, but it, it was good. And yeah. so I picked up the next one and then the next one. And um, and next thing I knew, I was hooked. And that being a what I call a joyful, um, lifelong reader, somebody who just loves reading for the pure pleasure of it, uh, became actually the inspiration for for, for uh, writing the Zach Bates Eco Adventure series, because that's really what I'm out to do is to help encourage and inspire other young people to pick up a book like I did and give it a shot and stretch your imagination um, beyond what you can do watching a TV show or a movie or, or even video games. Use that, that imaginative powers that we have, you know, th uh, through reading a book. You know, you are reminding us that there's a huge difference between reading something that you have to read and reading something you enjoy. And I think there's a lot of kids out there that get turned off because, you know, because they're in school and they're being assigned d different books and that the books aren't, you know, they're not igniting any passion within them. And so these kids grow up l looking at reading as a chore instead yeah. of looking at it as a, 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 a wonderful way to expand your horizon and get lost in your imagination. Yes, very definitely so. And, and again, think, 
thank goodness that uh, Mrs. Crabtree cared enough. Uh, she probably wanted just to, you know, hear me pipe down and quit complaining so much to my mom. But in any case, she made a huge difference in my life, and I wanted to, you know, do my part uh, here, you know, quite a few years later to kind of um, pay her back and also pay back the hundreds of uh, authors who I read and enjoyed and more or less kept me out of trouble growing up. Yeah. What a beautiful what a beautiful way to say thank you by passing passing it on and paying it forward. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now I I'm imagining with a love of animals uh, Zach also has a, an intense love of, of nature and of the earth. Yeah, so that's part of the eco adventure. You know, each book has at least one or, or more um, parts of the mission, and the eco adventure team mission is to help and make a difference with the uh, animals of the world that that we share this planet with. And in in book one uh, is where he meets um, Raket, who is the last living magic cat. And Rakit's uh, traveling companion, she really considers him more of her servant, but uh, Samson the flying dog says, you know, he's he's her companion. So the three of them kind of make up the core of the eco-adventure team. And uh, in the first book, without giving it all away, you can basically say uh, Rakit pretty much tricks or even blackmails uh, Zach into taking on a mission. Um and the mission is to go to the world leaders and stand before them and persuade them to start paying attention to the damage that they're causing both to the planet and to the animal world itself. Wow. How did somebody who has, uh, you know, a, a career in a very grounded way, medicine, you know, it, it, it's right here. How did you develop this this amazing imagination where you're creating this world of of magic and and animals and nature interacting together? Well, I I think going back, I think probably Mrs. Mrs. Crabtree had an influence because many of those first books that she had uh, brought home were. Uh, fantastical and, and, and science fiction. And I really kind of grew up, you know, loving books in general, but where I would, you know, oftentimes find myself is over there, you know, looking for the next, uh, you know, whether it's Isaac Asimov or uh, Heinlein or, you know, Cymac, all the, all the classic, you know, uh, uh, science fiction authors, and then also the fantasy area. So it's, for me... Science fiction and fantasy is like uh, the literary form of what's possible because you can really stretch out your imagination and not be stuck in um, the, the the reality of the of the day. Yeah, I I, I imagine as, as as you're speaking, it, it you know that kind of freedom to imagine and and to create might have been um, uh, kind of a real. Uh, Relief or, or break from you know dealing with uh, a world and medicine where everything has its limits. Yes, it it, it did. I mean, I I still remember uh, you know probably one of the most intense times in in my education was while I was at you know in veterinary college itself. Um, I was fortunate to get in after uh, three years of undergraduate. And uh, I loved the four years at University of Georgia, and it was challenging. You know, it, it, it was it was studying, 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 and then uh, take a little time off or you know to to the football game on the weekend. That was about it. Um, but even then, I kept reading, kept reading for pleasure. In fact, one of the things that kept me um, going when the going got tough, so to speak, in in veterinary college was reading the James Harriet books, which was all about, um, you know, being a veterinarian in, in, in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, all things bright and beautiful and all the other, you know, classics like that um, actually kept me inspired to say, wow, this is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm studying for. Yeah. You know, before we talk a little bit more about about Zach, I just wanted to mention it's 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 funny you're you're talking about 
uh, having your career path change at seven years old and having this lifelong love of, of veterinary merit medicine and taking care of animals. I, I just uh, had a, a dinner with my amazing niece tonight who loves science is in, in, in high school. And one of the things we talked about is, you know, if you're able to find a job and a career that you love, you never have to go to work a day in your life. Yes. Yeah, and it, you know, and there was so much about you know, being uh, a veterinarian that I loved. Um, I loved, you know, uh, taking care of the puppy dogs and the kittens, you know, particularly when they'd come in, you know, eight or ten weeks of age, and I knew I'd you know, be seeing them for years to come. And, you know, the, the toughest part for me, quite honestly, was operating that part, the medical and surgical part, with the business of keeping, you know, keeping a clinic open. Mm -hmm. And uh, I eventually got to the point that, okay, you know, that was that was enough for me. I, you know, I was in practice for about 15 years. And I think during that time, there's always had been that um, just kind of incubating idea about what if I, what if I, what if I, I could write? And <laughs> the thing that actually prompted me to start writing was, um, I bought a Macintosh, one of the first 1,000 1, uh, Macintoshes to come off the assembly line. I ended up buying one weekend, kind of on the spur of the moment. I was a bit of a, uh, you know, computer, not computer whiz, but I was fascinated by them. Uh -huh. And uh, I walked into a bite shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, where I was living, came out with a Macintosh, a printer, and a new credit card with everything on there. For it. <laughs> and by about Monday or Tuesday, um, I suddenly had buyer's remorse and thought, how in the world am I going to pay for this thing? <laughs> and um, I went, had only two programs on it, a, a writing program and a graphic program. And um, about 10 minutes of working on the graphics program said, nope, not going to make my money back that way. <laughs> and I thought, well, wait a minute. Now, I've said... For years, one day I wanted to try my hand at writing. Well, this is the day. Mm -hmm. And I wrote something. I think it was something like the 10 reasons to spay your cat. Sent it off to a newsletter up in Maine called Purr. And <laughs> about a month later, got a check back for like $50. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is so cool. And I, and again, another, another case of, of being hooked. Yeah. So, you know, in the process of, building my practice so I could sell it, I would get up at, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning to uh, to write for a couple of hours before I went into the clinic. Wow. I think we're both showing our age is I, I had an opportunity to work and learn on the first line of Macintoshes that, that came up. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's hard to believe, and and it's hard to believe looking back that like that was the state of the art, and I'm like, oh wow, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Me meanwhile, now I have a laptop that has a video studio and an audio studio, and we're podcasting to the world. Who would have thunk it? I know, I know for sure. I still have, I still have that Macintosh. It's not operational, but I, it, you know, I, I'll I'll never get rid of it. It's down in my garage, you know, packed away. So. Yeah. Hey, speaking of technology, uh, I, I, I want to learn more about the, the, the Zoom online read-ups. This sounds really fun. They have been so invigorating for me. You know, I mean, I've been writing, you know, at least 30 years now. And, you know, all sorts of different writing, writing for magazines, you know, and now in the past several years, you know, focusing on uh, fiction and, you know, primarily fiction, fantasy and science fiction. Um but the read-ups is something I, again, out of a bit of frustration, I thought there must be some way to connect uh, better and more completely with with my readers. And um, I really wanted to focus uh, this year and, and at least this year and all of next year on the children's and young adult uh, books. I do write adult fiction as well, as well under um, R. and Jason Bradford. Um, but I wanted to focus really on the Zach Bates and, and my other series for, for kids and young adults. And just kind of out of, you know, I, I do a lot of work in the area of personal development. My wife and I, uh, stay involved in the, with a personal development company. And out of that, you know, came this idea, well, 
you know, particularly with with all this going on with with COVID, this pandemic, how could we? I mean, what could we do to just make ourselves available to kids and their parents in a fun way that would also be, uh, you know, educational without the kids even knowing that it was educational? Mm-hmm. So we don't want to say too much about that part of it, you know, because <laughs> we don't want it to, to sound like drudgery. So we started doing these read ups uh, back in the summer and uh, we're loving it. And, and the kids and the parents seem to love it as well. That's awesome. So how does, uh, how does a family get involved in a read up? Well, they basically go to our, to my website. It's wbradfordswift.com forward slash read up and find out about it. Uh, we do it each, uh, once a month on, uh, on Tuesdays, uh, from seven to eight. In fact, for December, uh, by the time this comes out, it, this will be in the past, but just to give you some idea of what we're doing, I say we, cause I have a small team, which includes my audiobook narrator, who's marvelous. His name is Ben Fife. This has such an imagination and great different voices and all that. Um, so what we'll have done by December is a three part, um, series on his reading, um, a Christmas carol, the classic Dickens uh, book, A Christmas Carol. So those are the types of things, and we plan to have more things like that in the you know uh, coming months. And we're sure we're going to continue to do the read-ups at least through the springtime, um, and longer depending on how how they're received and and what the situation is with with the pandemic. Well, I have a feeling that the, we're going to be dealing with the pandemic at least through the spring. Um, yeah. un- unfortunately, we're, we're t- speaking with educators around the country, and I know that there's a big there's a big push, and in the media, people are saying, "No, we're going to do everything we can to keep schools open." And uh, as as soon as those words get out of someone's mouth, uh, another major school system is closed, and and yeah. um, you know the kids are sent to learn virtually. So yeah. I think that this, and, and even after those schools uh, return to in-person learning or hybrid or whatever happens, I think families are still going to want something that is comforting, uh, like this read-up series. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I, I think there will be a lot of things that, out of necessity because of the pandemic, we, we've started to do that even after the pandemic, after we, you know, let's just imagine everybody's vaccinated and we've kind of gotten beyond this and we can co- talk about, you know, hey, remember, remember back in 2020, I guess it was, you know, when we had this huge t- pandemic and how fearful we all were. But even when we get to that point, there will be things that we had that we created out of necessity that we will continue Mm-hmm. Like I think, you know, all, you know, this, you know, pick, pick up your groceries, you know, you know, at the curb. That, that's likely to continue. Mm-hmm. It's my hope and, and expectation and intention that, um, Zoom based readups continue not only from W. Bradford Swift, which is my author's name, not only from us, but from many other authors as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brad, before we go, I, I need to ask you. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm getting this. After talking about your 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 audiobook narr- narrator Ben Fife and, and hearing about Miss Miss Mrs. Crabtree, I don't know Barney of Barney of Mayberry just keeps running through my head. I don't know what that <laughs> that is. Well, I think Barney's last name was Fife. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Mayberry was in North Carolina. Ah. In fact, I know where it is and. Uh, um, I, Mrs. Crabtree would have fit in very well in Mayberry, I'm sure. <laughs> and for the 90% of the audience who do, doesn't has no idea what we're talking about, just Google Mayberry and, and you'll find out. <laughs> I can't believe there's 90% notes in this show that don't, don't know about Mayberry and, and, and Andy Griffith and all that. But that, that, that may be just me. Like you said, maybe we're showing our age here. <laughs> well, we want to make sure that everybody knows where to go to find out more about the Zach Bates Eco Adventure Series and all of the readouts. So please remind everybody of your website. Well, one of the things I want to actually mention about the website is we're part of the – the whole game we're playing here during during COVID 
is we want to give away at least a thousand books, either mm. ebooks and or audio books, before the end of the year. And so if you go to w Bradford Swift dot com and right there on the home page you'll see where you can actually join the Zach Bates Eco Adventure team and when you join the team you will have access to the ebook and the audiobook of the first book in the series Dominion Overall. Um, there's two other books currently written uh, Endangered and Ghost Elephant uh, and I'm in the process of working on the fourth book which has got the working title of Junkyard Dogs. And actually the idea, part of the idea for that book came from uh, one of the kids in one of the first read-ups. Because every read-up I asked the kids and the parents, but particularly the kids, if you went on a mission with Raket the Magic Cat and Samson the Flying Dog and Zach, what mission would you want to go on and what animals would you want to help? And Having asked that question, one of the ladies, one of the young girls came up and gave me the seed of the idea, which will become uh, book number four, Junkyard Dogs. <laughs> That's amazing. What an amazing young woman. Yes, yeah. she she really is. And, and uh, with her permission, her parents' permission, one of the characters in the book will have her name. That's awesome. Well, I can't wait so we have a chance to uh, read Junkyard Dogs. In the meantime, we want to encourage you to check out the Zach Bates Eco Adventure Series written by our guest, W. Brad Swift. Brad, thanks so much for being part of the show today. Oh, I loved it. I so appreciate you giving me this opportunity to share about something I'm really passionate about. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Lydia Lukitas. She'll be back to celebrate her two books, Haunted Houses and Haunted Hotels. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, we again, we're so very excited about reading in the new year. It is a free virtual family literacy fair. It is it's so much fun, and we're so proud of it. Please check it out. It's at readinginthenewyear.com. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Brad Swift. Be sure to check out the Zach Bates Eco Adventure Series. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. But most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.